What is up, Closer Nation? Man, I have got a good one for you today. We're going to talk about uh, the fear, like the fear that a lot of salespeople have, right? They're scared of leads. And I know you're probably hearing this and, you, and like the closers out there are like, dude, who the fuck is scared of leads? But like, let's have a serious conversation because it's something that I see people suffer from on a regular basis. And I, I guess the best way for me to start this out would be by telling you a story of like my first day. So I, let me let me tell you a little story here and I'll share everything with you. So in 2008, on July 15th, I was released, like finally released from the halfway house from federal prison. And by August, I had I needed to have a job, right? Like it, 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 by the August 1st, so I had two weeks to get my ass a job. So I went down and applied to a couple places and because of my sketchy past and track record, it didn't really work out for me. But I went to the largest mortgage bank in the entire state of Texas and I asked them for a job. And, uh, and the, the owner of the company, the general manager rather, not the owner, must have told me no a hundred times, right? We, what would have normally been a 20 minute interview ended up taking us probably two hours because I refused to take no for an answer. I'd already been turned down for another couple jobs that I really wasn't interested in anyway, but I knew this guy had some level of interest and I stayed with it and I told him, I said, here's the thing is if you will give me this one chance, I will not disappoint you. If you will take this chance on me, I will become the top producer in your company. I will make your company millions of dollars if you will just take this chance on me. And uh, after going through negotiations back and forth, finally decided to take the chance on me. My first day, we went through training. I mean, everybody was all talking big shots, right? First day in training, uh, there's like four or five of us that got the job. And everybody's like, I can't wait to get some leads. I'm going to close some leads. Fuck shit up. I'm going to wreck house. Hookers and blow. It's on, right? And they were talking about whose dick was bigger and everything else when it comes to how many deals they were going to close. And meanwhile, I just sat over there and I thought, holy shit, they're going to give us leads? I've never been in this scenario before. I've always been in a situation where I had to go out and get my own leads. And I was like, oh, man, have I really gotten myself into something awesome here. So I had a different mentality than these guys. I was excited about it. These guys were over here talking about it. We know people that generally talk about it ain't really doing it. So back to what happens that we get in like, so we go through training for two days to learn how to use all the software and everything else. We get in our cubicles and I, and I was, the, the four other dudes that like were with me that started in that class, there was, and, uh, and Eloy, if you're watching, you, you remember there was other guys, you were, you were one of them, not one that I'm talking about, but you were one of them. And what happened is, is you, the guys in the other cubicle, there was this dude that he was like, he was a closer from Countrywide, man. He was a badass dude from Countrywide. This motherfucker closed your mama if you're not careful. Don't leave your sister around. He was like, like a badass, you know what I mean? Well, I, we called him Captain Kirk because he was going to lead the SS Enterprise, whatever the fuck the thing's saying, right? So we go over there like that. If you Captain Kirk, you bullshit. Anyway, so check it out. So we get in there. We get to the cubicle. And like day one, everybody's excited. I'm excited, but I don't really say nothing. The other new guys are excited. By the end of day one, they have made a, a one call to each of their leads, and they've been like, these leads fucking suck. By the end of the first day, they haven't even given the fucking company a chance yet. By the end of the first day, I listened to these guys, because again, I wasn't bragging. I'm not one to talk. Like, I do shit, and then I brag about my results. I don't brag about what I'm going to do until I'm fucking done with it. Hit like if that's how you are, too. Here's the thing. When I go through and I listen to these guys, and they were complaining about the leads, I'm like, I called each of my leads like three or four times, and even in 2008, I texted them. And uh, even though that wasn't like, that was kind of a, against the rules back then, I texted them and emailed them and every way I could to track them down because I realized that each one of these leads was worth thousands of dollars to me. I was broke as fuck. I had no money for anything, and I needed to get all that I could get, so I was excited. Meanwhile, Captain Kirk, the fucking closer from Countrywide, he had a pension from Countrywide. He wasn't starving to death. He didn't just come from prison and lose everything from marriage and everything else. He had it fucking made for him, and he had like severance paid from when Countrywide shut down, so he wasn't starving. And so what happened is I noticed, this was the first inkling in my lifetime that I'd ever seen this, was I realized that salespeople, a lot of them just want shit handed to them. Right? And so they handed them leads and what they wanted, like, they, dude, I was in fucking dreamland. The fact that I don't have to knock doors, make cold calls, do any of this shit anymore. They gave me leads. Holy shit. By the end of the first day, I had three applications. That's three mortgage applications that I had taken that were submitted to the system. By the end of day one, while I listened to these other guys over here talk about how the leads were fucked up, they didn't give me special leads. I promise you this. If anything, they gave me the most fucked up leads because they wanted the felon out of their organization. But yet somehow I had three applications and all these other dudes had zero and they were complaining. Because what had happened was the countrywide closer was used to people already being committed. He was used to the streamlined refinance. It were lay down sales. And what happens is a lot of people, they get scared of leads. And I'll get more into this here in a second. But this was a prime example of they were given leads 
And then the guys were complaining that they weren't just given cash. Well, I can promise you this. If a company can replace your ass, then they're not going to pay you. Look at the uh, McDonald's kiosk, right? That goes for anything. Look at the Carvana thing they're doing in the car company right now. If they can, they don't need car salesmen, so they didn't fucking hire them, right? So the same thing was happening in this mortgage business. I was listening to these guys. They were just wanting shit handed to them. Meanwhile, I was over there willing to work and get what came from, for me. Well, then as I would go on and lead that company, I would start building a team. And then I would start giving leads to the people on the team. And I would realize, and, and dealing out leads to other people in the co company, I would realize a lot of people were scared of leads. I've had people a referral before, and they're like, what do you want me to do with this? I want you to call them. I want you to text them. I want you to email with them. And I want you to sell them what the fuck we sell. What do you mean what I want you to do with this? But it's a looming problem in our industry. A lot of salespeople are scared of leads. And I think I know why. I think I know why. Two reasons. Reason number one is they don't understand the pro they don't know or they don't understand the process that the prospect went through in order to become a lead. So number one fear is public speaking in America. And the reason why public speaking is number one fear is because people don't want to look stupid in front of other people. Salespeople are no exception to this rule. And so what happens is if a salesperson isn't certain how a person came through or what their referral mechanism or how they became a prospect or whatever else, they will, get, they will be uncertain and uncertainty, no matter if you're a salesman or whatever, leads to inaction. Right? It leads to where people will not take a lead. They will not do anything if they are not certain. So if they're not certain about the lead, then there's the fear of looking stupid and they refuse to call them. It's not their work ethic. It's not anything else. It's simply being that number one fear of looking stupid in front of other people. The second thing is it takes work. Now, this is where a lot of people fuck up. Okay, so there's the fear of the unknown, the fear of looking stupid. And then the second problem is there's fear of the work. There's no follow up. I watch everyday people that go through in our, our academy and they say in our academy, we teach you how to how to track down sales, how to build funnels, how to uh, leverage the sales, how to have inbound lead conversations with people, all that stuff. But I watch people every day say they generated hundreds of leads and I get messages. They say, hey, I've generated hundreds of leads and I can't get in touch with any of them. I'm trying to be a nice guy, ladies and gentlemen. I really fucking do. I try to be a nice guy. But let's be real. If you have a hundred leads, like, and it's not like I teach some fucking weird ads. It's not like I'm like, sign up today and get a free iPad. And then we call you and sell you insurance on the background. No, I'm like, hey, are you interested in buying a house? Put your name, your email, and your phone number, and we'll give you some help on buying a house. If you get a fucking lead from somebody that has a name, email address, and phone number of somebody looking to buy what the fuck it is that you sell, that is a smoking hot lead. If you can't contact the, that person, here's what happens. You're either A, not following up with them, you're B, not following up with them enough, or C, you haven't even reached out to them in the proper ways. You see, I teach everybody on my sales team, and we get a lot of leads, so we don't do this. We, we pick our primo leads and focus on them only because we get thousands a day at this point. But everybody on my sales team sends a text message, then they give them a phone call that usually leads to a voicemail, then they email them, and at the end of the day, they send them a text message again, and then they text them every single day. We don't call them. We text them every single day and hit them in the email every single day until we finally have a conversation with them. Guess what usually takes us 10 days? Usually takes us 10 days to get in touch with somebody before someone's like, damn, y'all's follow-ups for Litless. I want to learn how to do that shit. Usually takes us 10 days. If my sales team gave up on day number one, think of how broke we would be right now. Think about if I gave up on day number one. Think of how broke I would be right now. But you can't sell. So the difference is most people are scared of the follow-up. I see people every day in our academy that say they got a lot of leads and they can't seem to get in touch with them. And then I see guys like Brian Norvell and Greg Peckman that work uh, with me in the tribe and they've been through the same academy, the same training, everything else. And Brian does not fucking miss a lead. If he got 100 leads in his inbox, him, his sales team, his staff, his other agents, they get in touch with every single one of them because they don't fuck around because they're like me in that cubicle. They're like, oh, shit, we got leads. That's money, right? And so, but meanwhile, I see people every day who don't understand the exact process and aren't certain and are scared to reach out and call them. And what they do is they call them once or maybe they send them one email and then they're like, fuck, man, I can't get a hold of these people. Well, maybe, just maybe it takes you 10 days as well. Because listen, if you're selling houses, if you're selling insurance, if you're selling some kind of big ticket product, real estate, something of that nature, people don't just give random person their information and then make the same day decision with them right there on the spot. That's not how this shit works, right? What happens is people look you up on, they give the information, then they look you up on Facebook, and then they see how many times you're following up with them. If you're willing to do the work, if you're willing to work with them, if you're there as a trusted advisor, if you're providing value, and then they make the decision. But yet most people, they just assume, like I had a dude hit me up this morning on my inbox, and he said, hey Ryan, nice to meet you. My name is whatever the fuck his name was, and I'd like to talk to you about doing financial planning for you. Fuck, no, hi, how you doing? How's the kids? Where are you from? None of that shit. This is the equivalent of the guy being like, hey man, <laughs> go over here and 
give somebody a blowjob. You want me to give you one too? I mean, fuck, dude. It's like lay off, right? But that's the thing is people treat these leads differently. But even, even most people, they're so confused by how the whole process works that when they get a lead, they're scared to follow up with them. Or when they follow up with them, they don't add any value like this person and they push the lead away, right? If someone signs up for your funnel and you've got the name, email address, and phone number of who they are and what they were looking for, you should probably provide them with some sort of value based around whatever it is that you sell. For example, in my business, I sell sales training and lead generation. So when someone gives me their name, email address, and phone number, they're going to get a free webinar. They're going to get a free book. They're going to get something of value first. And then I'm going to follow up with them and be like, hey, did you like that? We have other things for sale. I gave you that for free. It was cool. Do you like that? We have other things for sale. The same shit works in your business. If you sell uh, inspections, right? Why not give a free report on five things that could get fucked up in a house that you need to look out for when you have an inspection? You make call the people, make sure that they got the report after they give you their name, email address, and phone number to get the report for free. And then, oh, by the way, if you're looking at buying a house, we'll give you a 10% discount on our inspections. Problem solved, right? But most people, they don't do that right? Like most people, what they do is they just try to strictly go for the throat. It's like, hey, buy my shit. Hey, I'm Ryan. Got your information. Buy my shit. See, meanwhile, my buddy's like, Brian, their follow-up process is different. It's delicate. It's systematized. So when they follow up with somebody, they're not saying, hey, I'm a real estate agent. Let me list your house. They're saying, hey, here's 10 houses just like yours that were sold in the last two months, which would make your house worth this. Here's a market analysis. Here's how much we think we could sell your house for. Here's a net income sheet. Here's all the value that you could possibly need. All your objections handled up front. Would you like to speak further about this? Well, fuck yeah, they would. But meanwhile, if you're following up with them, you're like, hey, hey you know, I list houses. Can I list your house? Can I put your house for sale? Can I, your house, my, my sign, your, your. Mm, they'd be, mm, yeah, yeah. No, that's not how it works, but that's what you appear like when you reach out to these leads online. They're sitting there, they're trying to get value, they're looking for great deals on houses, they're looking for a lower mortgage rate, and you're over here just like, you know, they're looking for a lower mortgage rate to be able to save money or whatever, and you're just over here waving your bullshit in their face, when all along, if you provided them with value, they'd be more inclined to do business with you. I'll let you in on a little secret. Back when I was a mortgage guy, and uh, they had these things called good faith estimates. I know they don't exist anymore, but it's basically a breakdown of all your fees. And it takes about 30 seconds to put together a good faith estimate, but to the outside eye, to the, the public, they look at it and they're like, dude, this is a fucking serious ass financial document. This must have taken hours to put together, but you know, we have software, a bunch of us dumbasses go in there and plug a few numbers and it makes it work. Well, I would watch my competition, the other guys in the office, they would shoot a good faith estimate over in like two minutes. Well, the appearance of two minutes worth of work is not conducive to thousands of dollars in commission. If you, if you feel me, hit the like button, right? In the eyes of the prospect, you just did two minutes worth of work and they're going to pay you thousand dollars worth of commissions. To the average person, that's an imbalance. That's not equal. You know what I mean? To the average person, they think you fucked them over for a bunch of money and just get your money really quick. Well, what happens was I would say, hey, listen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some research. I'm going to look at your numbers. I'm going to go over some facts. I'm going to put these stats together and I'm going to give you a financial spreadsheet that's going to show you line by line every single detail of where your money's going. And then you can compare this to where if I'm within $500 by the time I give you this to the time we close, if I'm over $500, give or take, then I'll come out of pocket for you. How's that for a guarantee? And see, first thing I planted that I'm going to be working hard for them, right? People like to pay people. They like to give them big money. They like to celebrate with them. If you're working hard for somebody, they appreciate it because the world's full of lazy people. And so what happens is they appreciate the fact that I'm working hard for them. They say, man, this dude's taking the time to put it together. See, if you slap something together in two minutes, it may be completely right. You may be the best in the world at it. But the appearance of that you didn't put time into it, you didn't think about there, everybody thinks they're unique situation and people don't pay any attention to it. Meanwhile, I'm over here and I'm acting like I have the details. So the reason why I say that is I provided the value up front. Hey, I actually did the work. I've actually done the research. I actually am going to look at this and not just slap something together. And if somebody gives you a good faith estimate within two minutes, you probably shouldn't trust them. I would instill that doubt in them to make me the expert because I'm the person coming to value. Now you can do the same thing with your leads as well. And I guarantee you, if you're one of these people that take inbound leads, and if you're not, then you need to get with breakfreeacademy.com forward slash entourage. We'll show you how to get them. But if you're one of these people that take inbound leads and you have a problem with your follow-up, it's not the leads. It's not the leads. It's your lack of effort or your lack of finesse or your, your lack of skill set to deliver value to what it is that the prospect actually wants. And you need to think about that and you need to decide, hey, are you just spamming people with a bunch of, hey, I got your information, let's talk. Hey, I got your information, let's talk. Or are you saying, hey, I've got your information. This might help you further along the process that you're trying to get through. If you have any questions and if you'd like to consult with me personally, here's my personal phone number. You can reach me any time of the day. You see the difference in positioning? The outcome's the fucking same. 
but it's all about how you position yourself. And a weak salesperson just calls and says, buy my shit. A closer has some finesse. So if you dig this, hit the like button, share it, leave me a comment with some feedback down below. I'm out of here. I'm going to go read this, this today's chapter in my elevator to the top book for Audible. So it's pretty cool. It's kind of weird. But I'm doing a little commentary shit. Ah, you'll have to see it. You're going to love it. Go to breakfreeacademy.com forward slash entourage if you want to learn more about how to generate your own leads. You can always grab these two books behind me on Amazon. Later.